After a day in the country, Mark McLeod and his brother Paul relax and watch the clouds roll by. They often talk about what they'd like to do when they're grown. Paul plans to be an electronics engineer. Mark wants to be a flyer. He wishes he were up in the sky right now, flying through those clouds. Perhaps someday he can join the Air Force or be an airline pilot. Their neighbor, Captain Cheney, has often told them fascinating stories of his 25 years piloting the big planes. But it's getting late and Paul is hungry. Come on down out of the clouds, Mark. Let's go home. Mark is writing a paper on his favorite subject, aviation. His father points out the various designs of the planes. Mark checks on the globe the distance to France, to Italy, to Greece. There's plenty of opportunity for Mark to read articles on aviation, as the McLeod reading table has many interesting magazines for boys. An important thing happened at the baseball game. It was just after the eighth inning, when Mark and his mother were chatting with Captain Cheney. He invited Mark to the airport to see the new Douglas DC-8 plane and also to see some of the technical operations behind the scenes that control the movement of the planes. An exciting invitation, and Mark gladly accepts. At the end of the final inning, Mark is up. A hit! He slides into second. Safe on third. And he's home. They've won. His family's pleased. Mark is enthusiastic about everything he undertakes. The coach reviews the plays. It was a close game. A compliment from his dad means a lot to Mark. The next day, Mark meets Captain Cheney at the United Airlines hangar, where the Douglas DC-8 freighter is being serviced. Captain shows Mark where the landing gear is retracted. They've finished refueling. Underground pipelines throughout the airport makes servicing easier. Covers protect the engine blades. Captain explains that the jet engine has fewer parts and is more efficient and powerful than any engine yet. This diagram shows the principle of jet propulsion. The front compressor is driven by the rear turbine. It draws air at high velocity into the combustion chambers where kerosene is mixed with the proper amount of air and ignited. The expanding gaseous energy is forced through the exhaust nozzle at tremendous speeds. This energy 
ramming against the atmosphere creates pressures which thrust the airplane forward. just as the action of the released air in a balloon thrusts it forward. Here is a huge jet engine at the factory. The large flap attached to the wing is operated by the pilot to slow the aircraft for landing. The aileron, a small section on the trailing edge of both wings, is used to bank the plane. Would Mark like to see the cockpit? Would he? Captain Cheney allows Mark to sit in the co-pilot's seat. The pilot plans the flight path, and his co-pilot checks the progress along the flight plan. There are four throttles, one for each engine. When a throttle is pushed forward, the fuel to the engine is increased and the speed accelerated. Pulled back, the speed is lowered. He shows Mark how to pull the lever that operates the wing flaps to slow the plane for landing. Captain Cheney doesn't expect Mark to remember all instruments, but he would like him to understand how a plane flies. Mark is especially interested in the radar equipment because his father, an electronics engineer, worked for 15 years to perfect the very fine radar system for this Douglas DC-8 plane. When the control wheel is pushed forward, the plane descends. Pulled back, the plane climbs. The pilot banks the plane by turning the wheel in the direction he wants to go, like the steering wheel on a car. When the pilot turns the wheel to bank, he changes the aileron on the wing. Under the red signal lights, the large disk to the left is the altimeter, which tells how high the plane is flying. The artificial horizon instrument shows the pilot his relationship with the real horizon when it can't be seen, at night or in cloudy weather. To the left, the airspeed instrument, right, the altimeter, which records the ascent. Directly below the artificial horizon is the gyro compass. Jet pilots wear earphones and a microphone all the time in flight. They are in constant radio contact with the aircraft control centers across the United States, where radar surveillance is monitored from takeoff to landing. At about 30 miles from the airport, en route aircraft are handed off from aircraft control center to local approach control. From then on, it's handled by the control officers in the tower. The pilots are assigned a pattern to fly until instructed to land. At the top of the control tower, Mark can see the entire field. From a helicopter, one gets a better view, the control tower. 15,000 cars park here. The cars may belong to some of the 25,000 passengers that go through this Los Angeles airport each day, or to some of the 3,000 airport employees. The United Airlines Satellite. The jetways leading to the planes enable passengers to board the plane from an upper level. Can you tell the number of planes parked here? The correct number is seven. The controllers in the tower are responsible for the landing and takeoff of all planes. John Murley, the head officer, explains how they supervise the arrival and departure of the aircraft. The timing must be exact, because every minute a plane is landing or taking off. 
they work in coordination with the airline dispatchers. Let's see the dispatch room in the United Airlines satellite. Each dispatch officer is a specialist and has charge of one phase of the work, such as operation or communication or weather. They keep track of all of their own company's planes in flight on route to and leaving Los Angeles. Every card on the board represents one of their planes and shows its location. The color indicates the type of plane. The black tab, a DC-8. The red, a Boeing 720. The blue, a piston airplane. A complex system of teletype electronic processing keeps the board up to the minute. These officers are always in touch with the tower, their pilots, and their own departments. In the flight office, Captain Cheney looks at his preliminary flight papers. The set of papers is different for each trip because of constantly changing conditions, such as the weight of the plane, number of passengers, weather, wind direction. From the information given him, the pilot files his flight plan. Mark is hoping Captain Cheney will be his pilot when he flies to Oregon this summer. Captain shows Mark several charts the pilots study before each flight. The pointer on this machine shows air pressure. These maps give the prevailing winds. It was a great experience when Mark and his father were invited to see the rollout of the XB-70, North American's new experimental triple sonic jet bomber. This completely new concept in aircraft is a forerunner of what is to come in aviation, the longest, heaviest plane yet built with six massive 30,000 horsepower engines and a speed of 2,000 miles per hour. The cost of development, over a billion dollars. Started in 1958, it may never reach operational status. However, it has greatly contributed to triple sonic flight and to the development of our present bombers. The day arrives for Mark to leave for Oregon, and Captain Cheney is to be the pilot on his plane. He and his mother arrive early because the captain promised to join them after he'd filed his flight plan. They check the board that shows the passengers their departure gate and the latest information on their flight. Captain Cheney explains that this board is kept up to the minute by remote control from the dispatch room, which Mark saw. At the ticket counters, people buy tickets or confirm their reservations. Mark has his ticket, so they proceed directly to the baggage counter. The agent checks Mark's ticket. Then makes out a baggage tag for the flight. He weighs the suitcase which is not overweight, and records the flight number on the machine. The button he presses starts the electronically controlled conveyor system, which automatically moves the suitcase to the right loading area for his plane. A tunnel leads to the boarding area where the planes park. The other officers and passengers have already boarded the plane.
Mark's ticket is okayed for this non-stop flight. A quick goodbye, and they're off. Captain Cheney follows the white guidelines on the pavement to ensure room for the wide wing spread. He taxis to the runway assigned to him by the tower and awaits their clearance for takeoff. Then the throttles are advanced and the plane accelerates down the runway. Captain pulls back the control wheel and the plane becomes airborne. takes off over the ocean. A fog hangs low on the shoreline. He turns the plane around and flies over the city. Then heads north according to his flight plan. In a short time, they are over Oakland Harbor, skirting San Francisco. <laughs> Further north, a lake. High mountains. is just where he wanted to be, up among the clouds. Finally, Oregon's Twin Peaks. Mount Hood. Soon now, they will land in Portland. Mark thinks more than ever that he would like to be a pilot. He may change his mind many times, but the days are more interesting and exciting if you have a purpose in life.